Robert Plank Show, Episode 85. Upgrade your thoughts and beliefs. What rich people know versus what poor people don't. Hey everyone, Robert Plank here. Welcome back to the Robert Plank Show. We talk about entrepreneurship on this program, self-improvement, motivation, webinars, membership sites, and a whole lot more. We're going to talk today about becoming a better person. I hope you want to become a better person. I know that I do. Uh, and I know that wherever you are in your life right now, there for sure was a point when you were not that great of a person. Uh, and uh, there are seven factors I'm going to go over with you today. And maybe you can treat this as kind of a, a self-assessment. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but it's really easy to fall back into those old habits. And I think you know what I'm talking about. Those old habits where it seemed like you were working harder than ever and putting in more hours than ever and nothing was quite going your way. And maybe you blame someone else for it. Maybe you felt sorry for yourself and you know, hopefully you got yourself out of that situation. But we don't want you to fall into that situation and we don't want that to become a normal day and a normal year for you. We want you to uh, have fun with what you're doing and be always improving and be helping out others and be making money and having fun. And we're going to talk about the mindset you need to have to make money. So there's a guy named Jack Ma and he is the founder of Alibaba, which is the largest retailer in the world. And he has this quote and it's kind of long winded, but this is really important. And I'm going to share with you the whole quote or most of it at least. Jack Ma of Alibaba says, the worst people to serve are the poor people. Give them free, they think it's a trap. Tell them it's a small investment, they say can't earn much. Tell them to come in big, they'll say no money. Tell them try new things, they'll say no experience. Tell them it's traditional business, they'll say hard to do. Tell them it's a new business model, they'll say it's MLM. Tell them to run a shop, they'll say no freedom. Tell them run new business, they'll say no expertise. Just ask them, what can they do? They won't be able to answer you. Poor people fail because of one common behavior. Their whole life is about waiting. So that's Jack Ma from Alibaba. And I want you to think about that. I want you to think of you've been in that situation before. And I mean, sometimes we do lean in that direction of saying, well, I can't do it. It won't work right or I can't plan my next course because of all these other reasons or I can't possibly do a webinar or sell a sales letter I can't possibly sell a thousand dollar product I can't possibly run a live event I can't possibly run a coaching program there's it's really easy to think of excuses because boom it's over in five seconds you didn't have to put in the five months that you would have put in otherwise of trying different things and so that's not really a great place to be now John Maxwell says the pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects it to change, but the leader adjusts the sails. So you definitely do need to go down whatever path you got to go down, right? Uh, and that means that if you're getting into a new niche, commit to that for four tasks every day for 100 days in a row before switching gears. But on the other hand, if you're on a sinking ship and you're trying to, for example, sell a course about couponing, sell a course about article marketing, and it just isn't working, and it just hasn't worked for two years, then sometimes you do have to adjust that direction. So I have three thoughts for you today before we jump into the seven factors that you need to look at inward in yourself. And I know that it's kind of painful. Or maybe you only, only want to look into one or two today, but three thoughts for you. The first one is that wealth is a choice. Making money is a choice. Having money is a choice. So you need to make up your mind whether that is something that you want or not. If that is something that you want for your family and your kids and your future or not. Have you ever heard the saying, that if money was distributed equally, so if you took all the money in the world, cut it up into even pieces and gave it to everybody worldwide, within 90 days, all the money would be back in, in the old hands. And why is that? Because most people don't know what to do with money or how to make money or keep money or any of that. And we'll talk about that today. The next thought is to stop fooling yourself about what you're after. So if you're one of those people that says, you know what, I don't care about money. I care about the lifestyle and all that. Well, you know what, if you have enough money or a decent amount, then you'll have the peace of mind to not be stressing about money and therefore you'll have the lifestyle that you want. 
or if you have a big enough of a nest egg and you say I want to cut back my hours well then you can do that but it, it frustrates me when people are trying to change more than one variable at a time they're trying to make more money and cut their hours well why don't you keep the hours you have or even put in more hours and make the money that you want and after you're making the amount of money you want then you can cut back but otherwise you're just you're setting yourself up for failure because you're trying to do too many things at once so having that peace of mind or being able to do good in the world if you want to donate millions of dollars to uh, leukemia research or something like that well that's a lot easier to do if you yourself have some money now I don't have all the answers but I definitely do know about motivating yourself and making your own money and being a self-employed entrepreneur so this is the show to listen to if you're stuck and one final thought before we jump right in it's to realize that you are the one holding yourself back all right if you're not making the money that that you need to make then chances are the amount of hours in the day are spent on the wrong thing or with the wrong people or you're doing too much of what's not making money or you're ignoring the thing that's right in front of you that could be making money I mean if I was starting over I would do exactly what I did which was get a day job get some amount of money coming in some kind of guaranteed income knowing that I will eventually outgrow that but I know so many people who have just been been floundering for the last five years ten years who don't really know how to how to run a business or how to be self-employed and I hate saying that and l- luckily I can say it on a podcast where I'm not picking on one person in particular but we see this over and over again in our coaching calls in the help desk uh, and that's why we're tackling the subject today because I listen to you you're telling me this is where you're stuck so you are the one holding yourself back so the first step is admitting that you have a problem that many times you don't have the answer and if you want to make more money then you need to in many cases associate yourself with someone else who's making more money than you to give you that advice you need to get to the next level and a great place to do that is to join our double agentmarketing.com mastermind where we can meet with you once per month on a group session but you can send in as many questions or URLs or, or whatever that you want and we'll take a look at it and get you to the point where first of all your website's complete you have a content marketing plan going you have a list that's built you have money coming in from products you have passive income you have a coaching program you have high ticket items you're probably missing out on one or some or all of those things so associate yourself with people who have those things that you want to help you to get there so you're the one holding yourself back and that's okay but don't be happily miserable about it and I have a thought that this concept of being happily miserable I think it kind of runs through the thread of today's seven factors happily miserable means that well you do do you know people who aren't doing great online and or even in general it's just in life I guess we could say right people who just aren't doing that great um, not a good marriage not a good house not a very good level of income not a really great car and instead of bettering themselves it seems like their life mission is to bring other people down to their level right you probably know someone like that maybe they're related to you or even if they're not if you go online go to any message board and you'll just see tons of negativity skepticism despair all that stuff and they're usually from people who themselves didn't do that great and they're not really putting much of an effort online and a lot of the times they are putting a lot more time into talking than taking some action and instead of them having to actually take a risk get out of their comfort zone try new things they would rather just talk and they would rather cause others to give up on their dreams because that's what they did and there's some kind of there's some really sick satisfaction if you think about it really sick satisfaction in that people who can't make it would rather prevent others from making it and tear others down because it makes them feel good kind of messed up so that's not what you want what you and and there's all these um different rationalizations for that and i mean one that i hear a lot is well i believe in being ethical but you know what to be ethical means that you help and change as many lives as you want so one way that you can kind of change the meaning of things is you think about that term ethical a lot of people think that well you shouldn't even be in business at all you shouldn't be selling anything at all because money is so evil and you're not ethical and a better way of thinking of that is to be ethical would mean that as many people as possible buy your 
training course. As many people as possible buy your software product because that way it'll be in in the most hands as possible and it'll help and change as many people as it possibly can. So think about that. Uh, think about things like that where in the past maybe you had a bad relationship with money and you listened to that silly saying that money is the root of all evil. Or I know that uh, in over the years whenever the the idea of my business comes up because I don't like to talk about what I do but when it comes up with like average everyday people the usual things that they ask are either uh, you know is it all a lie is it all a scam or they ask me about who I'm working with and can I cut those people loose from my business and it's like no that's the reason my business is where it is because of the people in it but I mean the immediate thought is who can you fire to to hoard more money of your own and I'm thinking well I don't want to kill the goose that lays the golden eggs but before we get too off track with all that silly stuff let's talk about these seven factors let me list them first like I like to do and then we'll unpack them so they are number one relationships number two abundance mindset number three take control of your own destiny number four time management number five learning curiosity and simplicity number six money management funny how we're talking about money and the actual literal factor of money is almost at the end. And then finally, factor number seven, future versus the past. You don't have to take crazy notes with this. Just go to robertplank.com slash 085 and you'll get all the show notes from today's program, today's podcast, today's episode. I almost forgot what I was doing here. So let's talk about upgrading your thoughts and belief. Rich people know that poor people don't. Factor number one are your relationships. One of my favorite books and one one uh, book that covers this subject a lot, the rich versus poor, poor people, is called Think and Grow Rich. And the very first section of that is about the mastermind. So the if you don't have money or if you're struggling or even struggling for a long time, I would look at your support system. And, and chances are everyone you talk to is maybe maybe collectively maybe if you summed up all their effort together they're kind of working to bring you down and that's it hasn't it's not your fault up until now but it will be your fault if you recognize that behavior and allow it to continue what you allow is what you allow to continue and if you haven't achieved greatness then maybe you've been forced to settle for less and you need to change that so uh, a mastermind your friends your support system means that you need to associate with successful people who actually challenge you and they, you might butt heads with them and things like that but they need to be people who challenge you and not just miserable people and i mean we're only talking today about being self-employed and making money but if you think about any any part of your personal life friends family um relationships dating marriage things like that you need to be with people who actually challenge you and not just people who are, are a stick in the mud so Speaking of that, speaking of these negative behaviors, it's easy to be a critic because, well, it's e it's easier just to talk smack about something and say that all internet marketing is a scam, all affiliate marketing is a scam, all of Amazon, Fiverr, book marketing, it's all a scam. Or, or the other thing I hear a lot is, well, it's it's so easy. I could totally go and make a sales letter and launch a course, but I choose not to. Well, if it's so easy, just go ahead and do it. And so we can go on and on about the gossip, jealousy, nastiness. But if you notice yourself gossiping a lot or gossiping about, and it's always funny how when you gossip, it's always about the same old tired, like five or ten things or five or ten people week in and week out. So recognize that and change it. Do a nice thing for somebody, not looking for something in return, but do a nice thing because it makes you feel good before you need help from that person or you might ever never need help from that person and and not just to use people. So that might mean, I don't know, maybe just send a quick postcard or send or make a quick phone call or send a quick gift to someone just because uh, because I mean, you don't need to be, you don't, you shouldn't be calling on people just to use them up. And I think that, you know, maybe in the past you've come across people like that and I, I know that I sure have where the only reason a certain person would even talk to me is because they want something. And, I, and it happens enough where I'm just thinking, oh, great. This, why can't they just get it over with? They're, they're talking to me, being friendly, being chummy. Just tell me what it is that you want. And I don't know if they realize the pattern or if they think that they're taking advantage. But I'm just the kind of person where if that happens too much, then I slowly start to phase that person out or I just like kind of 
avoid the person without even realizing that's what I'm doing and you don't want that and you also what you do want is to be a hundred percent present so when we're talking about relationships well there's the problem of well how much of it do I put into my business how much do I put into my family well the answer to everything is a hundred percent so don't try to balance your business family day job and fun balance I mean when I think about balance, I think that you're standing up on a balance beam about to fall over one side or the other, walking on a tightrope. Balance doesn't sound good. Balance sounds you're just barely hanging on. What you should do instead is, if you're in your office, you got the door closed, recording a podcast, you're 100% there. There's no phone going off. There's no pop-ups coming up. You're 100% there. If you're hanging out with your family, you're 100% there. You don't need to be checking your, your phone every two seconds. Uh, you don't need to be at your day job and kind of half-assing that and then going over and sneaking around doing this internet thing on the side. Be 100% there no matter what it is you're doing. Now, factor number two is the abundance mindset and I've kind of arranged these where one flows into the other and we're talking about an abundance mindset and if you look all around uh, especially the like internet message boards and things like that uh, the average person is super skeptical super nasty super mean and at least for me personally for some reason if someone is super negative and critical about something I tend to pay more attention I guess that I guess that's just how we're wired and things like that but there is a saying, I don't know the exact saying, I don't know if it's true, but there's a saying that wealthy people are, tend to not lock their doors as much, and then poor people tend to lock their doors. I don't know if that's true or not, but you want to be more trusting than skeptical. Obviously, within reason and not be super gullible and things like that, but give people more of the benefit of the doubt. And what this, what this conjures up for me is the book how to win friends and influence people and the the biggest takeaway for that book is is put yourself in the in the mindset of the person that you're dealing with and give them the benefit of the doubt so it's it's one of those things where if you say you have like a meeting or something and the person's late well don't try to think of excuses or don't don't try to think of like reasons the person is actively working against you and they're just doing this to annoy me or things like that consider what the other person's going through. Maybe their car didn't start. Maybe they're slammed with a bunch of other stuff. But you can't you can't just live your life and be skeptical of 100% of things because what that's going to do is you're going to end up exactly on the exact track that you're on, which might be working for a while. But unless you have some kind of feedback, you can't, I mean, you can't sustain yourself for the next 30, 40, 50 years doing what you've been doing so far. Eventually, you're going to need to change course and avoid that transactional trap where you either do something for someone and expect a favor or even worse where you play a game of chicken to see who can do the least work has this ever happened with you or maybe maybe you're part of a team and maybe you're the product creator and someone else is the copywriter and you say okay they haven't written the sales letter yet so i'm not going to record the product yet well for all you know maybe that person's thinking the same exact thing i'm not going to make the sales letter yet because i ha they haven't made the product yet and it, it just, it's a bad game to be in. Nobody wins. And then there's also the trap you can fall into of saying, okay, well, now I've recorded the product. They still have, haven't made the sales letter. I got suckered again. And, you know, you're, you, you're going to fail if you always expect everyone else to put in the exact number of hours that you do. Be the better person. And don't think that it always is going to add up. It, it usually won't. And so something else I've been seeing, something else I saw today, in fact, was someone slamming all these other marketers, all these marketers that actually make money and actually put out products, imagine that. And I saw someone more or less say to not buy any course out there about internet marketing because why? if an internet marketer is making a bunch of money and they're teaching me traffic or they're teaching me product creation, why would they give away their secret sauce? There's there's no way they divulge those secrets. Well, you know what? I love divulging my secrets. I love teaching you. I love loading you up with all kinds of cool stuff in this podcast because, man, if this is your first time hearing from me, or maybe this is your first time hearing from me in a while, and I'm revealing all this cool stuff to you, well, then I can't wait for you to see what kind of cool stuff I'll reveal in my emails or on my webinars. By the way, you can rejoin my list if you ever dropped off at robertplank.com in the sidebar. So I can't wait for you to be blown away by today's call and also see 
what kind of cool stuff I reveal on my webinars and buy a course from me and be blown away by what's even just in the first module and now you can't wait for the next modules. So you can't think in such small terms. The things that you do is, is not really going to affect the rest of your marketplace or your niche as a whole. So if you decide to charge super high or super low prices, I don't think that's going to affect anyone else's business. If you reveal a bunch of cool secrets, you're not going to get phone calls from other jealous competitors saying, why the hell did you reveal those secrets? It's not going to happen. And many of us, many of us entrepreneurs, we enjoy teaching and we enjoy uh, building a list. And we always hear that thing about how some people, some subscribers say, well, I'm hopping off your list because you try to sell me too much stuff. Well, you know what? I do sell you stuff, but I also give away some great value. So I feel as if I have earned the right to sell you a bunch of stuff and to mention a bunch of URLs because I've taught you all kinds of cool stuff here. It'd be one thing if I taught you nothing and then said, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. But I'm saying, buy my stuff. Here's some other cool stuff I'm teaching you. Buy some more stuff. Uh, and that's the kind of person that you need to be because, man, if you, if you hate the thing that you secretly want to become, wouldn't that just drive your brain crazy and put you into circles like you want to make a bunch of money on the internet but man there's these scumbag internet marketers but i want to be just like them but i can't be them because i don't want to take these actions i don't want to sell anything but man if only i could so you don't want to be stuck in that situation it's not a zero-sum game you need to get that thought out of your head that you have to steal money in order to make money or that someone else has to lose money in order for you to make money. If you sell a $1,000 course that someone can then use that knowledge in real estate and voiceovers and in WordPress to make $100,000 over the course of their lifetime or even in a shorter or even in the next year, well, then everybody wins, right? Because you made money, they paid you money, but then they made more money as a result of that. And then maybe you taught a WordPress course and someone made a hundred grand out of the WordPress course that you taught. And they had all these different clients who themselves would not have had a website, but because they had, because you trained someone who then got their own clients, now everybody wins. So, so on the other hand, or not on the other hand, but also kind of along the same line of thought, we'll come across people, especially at live events for some reason, who say things like, well, you know, if this money making thing is so easy, then how about I'll give you an idea and I'm not going to tell you what the idea is yet, but I'm just going to give you the idea and you can make the product, you can make the sales or you can pay for the traffic, you can do the marketing, you can do the selling, you can do the customer support, you can make the upsells and just give me 50%. If it's so easy, just just give me half of the money. And I think that the the answer is that having your online business and making money online it's it's not easy but it is simple and i mean and it, it kind of therefore then is easy because there's not a lot to it and i think a lot of people just make it complicated and a lot of people throw up their own obstacles and roadblocks and personal issues but there is money to be made for everyone especially if you get out of the i don't want to i guess i'll just say like the bottom feeder kind of niches the internet marketing, biz op, MLM kind of stuff. That's where you have the most desperate, broke, sad, skeptical people. And I hope that's not a, a mean thing to say, but it, it's really easy to just get pulled down by just a handful of nasty internet commenters. Or, um, you know, you might have that one refund or that one chargeback that just kind of ruins your day a little bit and it's really weird that one little refund or chargeback will negate 10 or 20 people saying that you're great so knowing that abundance mindset okay a lot of people want and need what you have there are people getting on the internet all the time who want to know how to write a sales letter want to know how to make a wordpress site want to know how to trade stocks and we can all win. You can win because you sold the course. They can win because they got value out of that course. Factor number three, before we get too bogged down, take control of your own destiny. Enjoy problems instead of placing the blame or making excuses. So didn't I say before that every factor here kind of builds upon the previous ones? And so what we've been 
leading to and heading to is this idea of self-sabotage. And I would say that this is, in disguise, the number one problem that I, I wrestle with all the time, and I think it's the number one problem that I keep seeing on uh, on our help desk when I ask people for, for ad- ad- ideas for a podcast or I ask where they're stuck, it's the self-sabotage thing. You can call it one foot on the brake, but it comes down to the need for control because, well, if you're self-employed, you probably quit your day job because you want to have more control over your life, right? You want to set your own hours, be your own boss, do your own things, have your own day, be able to take a break or vacation whenever you want. But then the problem is that, well, it turns out that you need to have some amount of a work ethic, some amount of discipline, not a lot, but you need to do those tasks that make you money or hire someone who will do the task and then that means that you'll then have to pay the person and then have to check on their money making tasks as well. So we look for control but then the self-sabotage thing is the wrong kind of control. Why is that? Because if you if you don't launch that product then you 100% control the outcome, right? Or if you make, let's say you make a sales letter, you make a course about flipping real estate you send one email, nobody buys. You say, aha, I knew. I knew exactly what was going to happen. And guess what? I was right. Now I feel really good because I knew exactly what was going to happen. It's all a scam. Of course, I'm so smart. And well, that starts off as self-sabotage. It's innocent enough until you have to pay the bills. And then, but then that leads to you feeling lonely again. And then you go in search of a support system, but then you end up with more self-sabotages. And this is how some of these communities build up uh, where everyone's a busybody and everyone's miserable. Misery loves company. And then it's almost like they go on a crusade, more or less, trying to save others, right? Trying to save others from the horrible mistake of trying to make money on the internet. So that's that's what led it helps me that's what pulls me out of the self-sabotage trap is just is not only the self-fulfilling prophecy but knowing that if i go down this path for too long then now i'm going to be in a group of miserable people and we'll we'll drag others down it's like the worst kind of of viral marketing that there is right everyone trying to bring each other down so instead you want to be coachable and that means that well you should you should try new things. And obviously, I mean, don't be so gullible that you've been trying the same thing for five years and it doesn't work. But if you're, if you, if you heard that you need to have a list, then sign up for an autoresponder company and put a form on your website today. If you know that in order to get clicks on your website, you need to have an affiliate program, then go and take that action and set up an affiliate program today. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just make some dang mistakes. We have a course called podcastcrusher.com, which shows you how to make your own podcast. And you know what? Even if you don't have time to go through that course today, record your first episode today. We have a course at webinarcrusher.com on how to make your own pitch webinar. There is absolutely no harm at all in running your own pitch webinar not even knowing how to do one because you're going to realize where your weaknesses are you're going to realize the things you don't know you're going to realize the problems like how do i how do i record it how do i show my screen the right way and then when you join us in webinar crusher you'll be on the lookout for those exact items as opposed to just taking some notes so any kind of coaching environment, and yes, you buy a book, you buy a course, that is in kind of a, in a, its own form coaching. But if it's coaching like that or one-on-one coaching, I would rather you personally, I'm talking directly to you, I would rather you go into coaching with this, with saying, here's what I've already built and here's where I'm stuck, as opposed to saying, I don't know where to start. And I would say that the majority of our coaching calls, I'm not making fun of anyone saying this, but the majority of our coaching calls are just people not having any kind of direction. Or maybe they'll maybe they'll join our membership cube course, right? And as a bonus, there'll be a coaching call. We meet them on the coaching call. We say, we're going to talk about membership sites. Whatever you want, just ask. We've got the answer. And, and I would say the majority of the time, that coaching call is from someone who hasn't really watched the course. 
either they ha they've watched one video or zero videos or they've watched the whole thing and they've watched it in the background while the TV's on or they're reading a book or doing something else. So the coaching call is still goes great. I, st I still have the patience for that. But the coaching call ends up basically being a cliff's notes of the course that they could have watched. Now, if they'd only watched the course, put out some stuff and then got stuck somewhere, we could focus, we can spend that 40 minutes on improving their sales letter conversion rate or on having their affiliate program work correctly. So it's way more helpful if they've tried something and it's not great, but then we can build on that as opposed to just having a blank slate and then not knowing where to start. So instead of a long-winded sob story about you say, well, you know, my, my wife, uh, hurt her leg and I'm on Medicare and I'm 85 years old and instead of listing all these things just get to the point and tell me the one area where you need help because if you this if you say a big rehearsed sob story who is that really helping it's it's not helping anyone it's not really getting anyone the information they need it doesn't help me help you and then you tell that sob story enough times and that becomes all you really have to say is that sob story. It's not a good place. I only say that because I myself am concerned about at some point heading down that path. But if I see that problem in front of me, I can avoid it. Other problems to avoid, other things that you can stop before they start, limiting beliefs, which, well, I mean, limiting belief basically means that you don't know anyone personally who's made money online, so it must not work. They all must be liars. The confirmation bias, which means you've decided ahead of time making money doesn't work. You tried it, you half-assed it for a couple days, didn't work, aha, I was always right. Self-fulfilling prophecy, shoot yourself in the foot, we can call it whatever we want. But what, what helps me so many times, maybe this will help you, is the equivalent of the four minute mile. The story of the four minute mile means that no one ever ran a mile in four minutes before Roger Bannister did. And then that same year, tons of other people ran a mile in four minutes and tons of other people in the decades since. So, so many times, if I join a course or I see different things happening, I want to, I just want to see it done. And I don't necessarily need all the steps, all the details. And that can come in the, in the course and the checklist and whatever you teach me. But what helps me the most is just seeing the end finished result and just seeing that it's possible. So find a way to join a community like that. Find a way to enjoy building websites and making money. And I want you to get to that minimum viable product, that proof of concept where you complete something so that you can then contribute value. It's way easier for you to have a, a sales letter and it's done, buttons there and it's not converting and you can then go to someone and say, critique this or help tell me why it's not converting. Give me some guesses as opposed to how do I make a sales letter? Well, there are tons of books and courses on that and you can make a stab at it first and then improve on it later. And when we're talking about taking control of your own destiny and enjoying problems and stuff like that, let go of what doesn't matter. So much of what's held me back over the years is just focusing on stuff that happened years, sometimes decades ago, and it doesn't matter. What matters more is what's coming up, what's right in front of you. So what's right in front of you, speaking of that, time management. I've told you in almost every podcast to complete four daily tasks a day. All right, and one of those tasks is definitely not planning your day or things like that. It's just the four money-making things you need to be doing to get your business to where it needs to go and making more money. And we like to call this also an appointment-based business. So I'll have items in the calendar, not too many, just a handful. Items in the calendar if I need to meet with someone, like my business partner Lance Tamashiro, to plan out the launch for this week or to knock out help desk tickets or I'll have something on the calendar to meet for a coaching call or for a webinar class session. But I have an appointment on the calendar and I'm there, I show up on time, maybe a couple of minutes early, I do, I knock out what needs to be done and then I'm out. And many times in these meetings, we actually have a reason for meeting. It's not just to catch up or things like that. And sometimes we'll meet with other people for the projects we do. And many times it gets to the point where I have my list of questions. And then I get to, I've got enough questions answered that I can now act. And if I, and now that I think about it, the, the coaching calls that we've done with, with coaching clients, the ones that are the most enjoyable are the ones where we meet, they have a list of questions. They just knock this out, knock this out, knock this out. We're done. There's no reason to keep hanging around longer. Uh, and even if we have our, we have what's called a Monday meeting where uh, every Monday we meet, we plan out the launch for that week. Um, we plan out maybe what, what is the next step for our business the next couple of weeks. Uh, and 
we figure and sometimes there's some things on the calendar for later that week but I have a list of usually usually like three or four things and so does Mr. Lance and we just kind of go through them knock them out and there's no reason to hang around any longer than that because that's just a waste of time so you become what you focus on and your daily time system like your calendar is only effective if you take it seriously and this is a little thing called anchoring and that means we have our four daily task system now that the reason why that works if you if you ship it down to the bare essentials the reason why this four daily task system works is because when i list my four tasks and i complete them well then now i've kind of got that feedback loop and then i know that i then i get to the point where i know that if i list my four tasks I'll probably complete those four things as opposed to a big long to-do list that keeps growing and growing. So the next day when I list four more tasks, then chances are those will get done too. And it just, it's a daily process where every day it works and it works and it works. So train your brain. Here's a good example. Here, here's an exercise you can do today. You can set a timer. I used to use a desktop based one, but now I just open a, a Google tab, a Chrome browser tab. I type in countdown timer. This is built into Google now. Countdown timer. Set it for 10 minutes. Set it for 10 minutes. Open up a Word document, or I guess a Google Drive document if you want to be 100% Google, and start typing your next blog post. You got a blog, you need a blog, whatever, maybe it's your first blog post. Just start typing something. Literally start typing. Even if you're typing, I'm typing. I don't know what to write about. Whatever it is, just start typing something, anything. Start writing and don't stop writing. Okay, even if you don't know what to say, write a sentence about how you don't know what to say. If you're listing, uh, if you're talking about what you did this month or what you ate for breakfast or you're listing out ideas of what, what you could blog about next, just type something, anything, and don't stop for 10 minutes. But the instant the timer stops, save your Word document, you know, don't throw it away or whatever, but then get up and leave the computer completely. All right, take a walk, come back to the computer set 10 more minutes and just start typing or doing whatever it is that you need to do. So this retrains your brain that when the timer's going, I've got a I've got a kick butt. I've got a haul ass. And if the timer stops, I've got to get off the computer instantly that second. Even if I'm halfway through a word, halfway through a sentence, nope, get off and stop. So don't act like you're smarter than the system. And it really is possible for you to retrain your brain just by doing this a, a couple times a day. If you're anytime I'm stuck, especially with writing, that's what does it. Set a timer for 10 minutes, start typing, start typing, start typing, literally anything. Once the timer stops, I'm off the computer. And I just get that weird adrenaline rush. And this is called anchoring where you're associating one thing with another. So I'm associating being on the computer and the timer going with typing left like crazy. And this way, this undoes the checking of your phone, checking of email, checking of Facebook, checking of Skype, having all the pop-ups. This way you're getting closer to 100% absolute focus. Don't act like you're smarter than the system and don't just shrug it off because if you don't take the system seriously, then you will disassociate with that productivity. So the reason why for a small number of people, the reason why four daily tasks doesn't work for some people is because they honestly, they don't believe that it's going to work for them. They think I've got to have 20 tasks or they say, well, I've got to do this and also have the TV on in the background or I've got to have all these other tabs open. And my favorite thing, I'm not my favorite, but the thing I keep hearing over and over again recently is people saying, well, I put in a scattered hour. What are you talking about a scattered hour? So they say, well, you know, I did 10 minutes here and then I, uh, the phone rang and then I had to get back to it. 10 minutes happened and then the baby cried. 10 minutes happened and then I decided to go and check the sports scores. And I'm thinking, well, man, if you only put in a focus 20 minutes, that would be more than a scattered three hours for you there. So don't just shrug it off and don't just say, okay, I got it. Because if you stop taking your calendar appointments seriously, and if you stop taking your four tasks seriously, if you go even a few days where every day you post tasks and you just kind of brush it off and you don't do it, then four daily tasks is going to stop working for you. And you're going to have to reboot and get back to basics and say, I'm going to post four things. I'm going to do those four things. I'm going to post four things, going to do those four things. And if the four things bored you or if the four things weren't important to you, then choose a different four things. Or if you only get one of those four things done, it means that you need to 
split those up better and have some smaller milestones, some smaller tasks for you. Or if you blow through them all, that means you need to have more challenging tasks and things like that. But don't just shrug it off. Don't just say I got it because you will disassociate and you'll have to recreate that connection. Now, what does this all have to do with rich people versus poor people? Well, rich people keep it simple and they stick to a system and they do all these things that have been proven to work over, you know, thousands of years. Journaling, meditations, affirmations, and more than anything else, daily actions and habits. They usually wake up at the same time every day. They usually do the same kind of morning routine. So maybe there is something to that. Now, speaking of keeping things simple, let's jump into factor number five. We're getting to the home stretch here. Factor number five of rich people versus poor people is it's a three in one for you. Learning, curiosity, and simplicity. So the, and, and this will tie into money management uh, or money in, a, in the next factor, but the the average poor person buys a heck of a lot more lottery tickets than the average rich person. And there's a reason for that. The reason for that is that they kind of have like an Otis Redding mindset. They think that they're just going to wait around for their ship to come in and someday it'll all magically happen. Without a plan, they're just going to suddenly win the lottery versus taking some action. I'm not saying that you have to, you know, grind it out. I'm not saying you have to be a eight out eight dollar an hour janitor for 50 years and save every penny you earn but it's not just going to magically happen for you there are no guarantees in life and if you don't help yourself out i mean there's no one there's no one else looking out for you if you don't help yourself no one is going to help for you so what we want to do instead of just waiting around is to instead crack the code and get to whatever that goal is in the least number of steps and make it repeatable. So if your goal is I just want to make $1,000 a month or in a month, let's just even make it simpler. So $1,000 in the next 30 days, an easy way of thinking about that is to sell 10 copies of a $100 product, information product, solving someone's problem. So you have to think about, okay, in order to sell 10 copies in a month, I need to sell one copy every three days. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Now I need to think about uh, how many people, how many clicks or visitors per day do I need to get onto my sales letter? How big is my existing email subscriber list? Maybe I need to make some phone calls, some personal emails, maybe to set up an affiliate program, things like that. But I need to break down that goal or whatever that milestone is. And if you haven't hit any goals recently, I'm not saying you should you should settle for something, but if you're, you keep saying, my goal is 100 grand a month, 100 grand a month, and X number of months in a row have gone by and you're still at that point, maybe your goal needs to be to make 100 bucks this month if you haven't even gotten to that point. So you should definitely make a goal that stretches you, but don't make a goal that's so ridiculous and huge that you'll never get there and therefore you're sealing your own fate. We want specialized knowledge versus hard work. So I discovered at a pretty young age that I knew programming, I knew PHP, I knew web pages, I knew WordPress. So I sold my expertise for that. I would create software products. I would charge $100 for a task which took me five minutes where I had to upload some files into a folder, uh, add a database, edit a file, run a program, and it would install this script or this plugin for $100 because that is what the marketplace was fine paying for. Wealthy people, rich people have an intake of information to solve a real problem. They'll read books all the time just to get that one little insider to solve the current problem versus poor people will channel surf and watch reality TV. You need to make those repetitions to improve your skill and repeat that positive result. Now, failure is a learning experience and you can think of any kind of failure you've had. We've all had it. It's the chance to either begin again more wisely or to change course, but don't give up on something too soon and don't set yourself up for disappointment by taking some actions that you know are going to have the same exact failure every single time. Don't ignore the simple stuff or the familiar stuff and don't get caught up in buzzwords that make things more difficult. What I'm talking about is that the Eskimos have 200 words for ice and zero words for war. 
Why is that? Because they never go to war, and an Eskimo is surrounded by ice, so there's all kinds of different terms for that. So in the same way, there are so many different terms and phrases for the term landing page, right? You got a landing page, you got a pitch page, you got an opt-in page, you got a squeeze page. I'm sure there's about 10 more I can think of that I just don't use because they use it in different niches. But don't ignore a landing page just because somebody says, oh, landing pages are dead. What you need is a reverse sideways squeeze page. It's the same dang thing. Just go ahead and do it. Avoid the professor mode which means that you learn stuff and just reteach it. Avoid student mode, which means you just learn stuff and take big, thick notes and take no action. You got to do some stuff. So speaking of doing stuff, money, right? This is what this all comes down to. You take these actions and put in these hours because you want to have money. And having, having a good, being on good terms with money, it almost sounds weird and superstitious, but it's a real thing. People who don't, People who don't have money have a real emotional kind of attitude and relationship towards money. So if you ask someone, I mean, if you ask someone, um, what would you do if you won the lottery? What if you suddenly had a hundred million dollars in the bank account? There be there's all kinds of emotional answers from people who who never have seen a hundred million dollars. They think, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy all the stuff. I'm gonna give all this money to all these people. And and I mean, when there was the uh, there was some like big Powerball prize uh, a few years ago and I just I saw all kinds of posts all posts all over Facebook of people saying they're already stressing out because they're worried that if they get a bunch of money then all these family members are going to try to steal it from them or murder from them and I'm thinking first of all you're not going to with the odds the way that they are you have a, a higher chance of being elected president while drowning and being struck by lightning while crashing in a, a in an airplane so first of all forget about that and you're getting emotional about a thing that hasn't even happened yet uh, but this is the relationship that poor people have towards money versus the, the ones that rich people have and the best kinds of rich people that you hear about or at least that I hear about are the ones that they have a bunch of money in the bank but they don't they, they spend a lot less than they bring in right and so um, Jeff Bezos still drives his old like 1992 Hyundai I think and I mean uh, Mark Zuckerberg dresses like crap. Bill Gates dresses like crap. Steve Jobs used to dress like crap. And they just, they lived in just some pretty average homes. Like I think Steve Jobs' home, um, I think it sold for like $10 million just because of the, the inflated real estate prices. But when he bought the house, it wasn't even a million dollar house. So this total billionaire didn't even own a million dollar house. So it's not just about showing off and necessarily feeling good, but making these logical decisions. Um, and saving versus gambling and sure you have to take risks and things like that in your own business but I mean you can't gamble every single time and I mean how many people do you know who either blow their whole paycheck on stupid stuff or lottery tickets or drugs or a fancy car or big giant speakers or landscaping just to look good versus someone who you actually want to be where you live below your means and I'm not saying that you know, if you have a big house, you're an evil person or anything like that. But it, it makes more sense to have a, a crappier car and a crappier house than you need to have. Just because that leaves more left over for more fun things. Doesn't mean you have to live like a total hobo or anything like that. But live below your means is, is the best relationship with money that you could have. Now, as we're winding this down, let's talk about the future versus the past. So poor people are hung up about the past. They're hung up about what the deeper meaning is. And where, that's, where that comes into play, I mean, you make your own story. All the different things that happen in life don't really connect. They're, they're a bunch of meaningless, random events, if you really think about it. The house you live in, the city you live in, the, the job you used to have, the person you're with, the car you drive. I mean, the car... The, the car that you're driving in right now, the only reason why you're in that exact car is because you went, when you went to the dealership, that happened to be the car that was there. And when you did your research, out of all the cars you looked at, maybe you looked at 5, 10 cars, that happened to be the one that you, that you chose. So, so much of what happens to you is meaningless, but then you choose to assign meaning to those past events. And you have an almost infinite supply of what you can choose to connect to other things 
and it can be good or bad. So you can either look at the past and things like that as a learning experience, or you can look at it things and saying, man, weren't things great in high school? Man, weren't things great when I was making a million dollars a year? Or you can look at it as, okay, the past was the past. It's set in stone. I can't change it. I know what happened. It's, it's hindsight is twenty twenty. but moving forward, now what should I be doing? Throw out what keeps distracting you. Become desperate to reduce clutter. Move out of your comfort zone and do those things that you are afraid to do. And pursue a real dream with real milestones and know exactly what you want in just in a year from now. What's one thing that you really want? Don't plan out. Don't do this thing where you say, what do I want in 20 years, 10 years, 5 years, 1 year, 6 months, 3 months, 1 month. That's a lot of work. Just think about one specific thing you want to have in the next 366 days, 365 days, instead of just more of the same crap because that's boring. So you don't have to be the luckiest person or the smartest person or uh, or any of that stuff. What you need to do is change those thoughts and beliefs that are holding you back. And there's always room for improvement. And I want you to look at those seven factors and ask yourself, are you actually uh, are you actually living up to your full potential? with your relationships, with that abundance mindset, with taking control of your own destiny and therefore avoiding self-sabotage, with time management and getting rid of the distractions, with learning curiosity and simplicity and gutting out those things that aren't making you money and doing more of what does, money management so that way you don't, you don't blow it all away and so that your expenses don't inflate to the same level as your income, and focus on the future and don't just keep thinking and reminiscing about the past because because that is gone forever. What's more important is what you're doing now. So stop complaining so much and instead focus on what's good about the situation first of all and then how can you improve. It's I mean it's easy to just to just talk smack, but you can talk smack and then say, "Well, now I'm going to change this so that this doesn't happen to me again or this thing that's bothering me won't bother me in the future." And that way, well guess what? You're actually building towards something and you're actually improving and becoming a better person. So upgrade those thoughts and beliefs. That's what rich people know versus what poor people don't is about relationships, abundance, control, time, learning, money, and the future. So go ahead, do it right now. Take that action and join us in the Income Machine course where we show you how to get your opt-in page niche follow-up system, membership sites, traffic, and more set up in just a few days. So that way, instead of you trying to piece it all together, you can just hop on the exact system and do it for yourself and repeat it over and over again. That's at IncomeMachine.com. That's I-N-C-O-M-E-M-A-C-H-I-N-E.com. And while you're on some of those web pages and your browser tabs, go to robertplankshow.com slash iTunes go to the review section and leave us a quick five-star review. Do it right now while you're there, and that helps us to rise in the ranking, so please leave that review. I'm Robert Plank saying upgrade your thoughts and beliefs. Talk to you next time, and bye now.